Allied success in New Guinea hasn't been won without immense effort and very hard fighting. One important scene of action has been Milne Bay. Our pictures show reinforcements arriving after the Japanese attempt to gain a foothold had been broken by Australians. Patrols were still out on the job of mopping up small parties of the enemy who were hiding in the jungle and sniping our men at every opportunity. On the beaches, wrecked landing parties showed what a warm welcome had been given to the Japanese by the cannon guns of Australian pilots. And inland, Japanese tanks had apparently been knocked out by anti-tank rifles. Other interesting trophies included tree-climbing rubber boots, armoured waistcoats strong enough to deflect a glancing bullet, though the steel plate wouldn't stop a direct hit. Japanese gas masks of rather inferior pattern, and helmets, of course, this one on the skull of a headhunter who apparently got himself hunted. The Milne Bay victory was due in large measure to the RAAF, who did such great work with their Kitty Hawks. Squadron leader Bluey Truscott, who was on the job, already had 15 Messerschmitts to his credit before he started on the Jap Zero. The Japanese plan was to attack Port Moresby in a two-way assault, from Buna and from Milne Bay. Both threats were defeated. New film from the Owen Stanley area gives us a pretty good impression of the appalling difficulties. At any moment, a man may be picked off by a sniper from some observation post hidden high up in the trees. The crack of a rifle breaking the silence of the forest is the first and sometimes the last warning you get. Australians bring up their artillery. And please remember that the temperatures round about 90 in the shade are wet, steamy heat at that. As for supplies, they come up by air mail, if you're lucky. Physically, the New Guinea front is one of the toughest of all fronts. Eerie kind of fighting with the enemy seldom in sight. Tremendously hard slogging. Each man carrying 60 pounds with a necessary 10 minutes rest every half hour. Talk about toil and sweat. But for the love of Mike, don't mention beer, says Corporal Brummage. All the way across the mountains, through the forest, they pushed the Japs right down to Buna, their base. Here at Nauro, on the way across, one unit found these two Japs, left behind by their so-called comrades, to die. And they were pretty nearly dead. Soldiers of the Son of Heaven, thankful to be taken prisoner. 